Um, who's under 30? Raise your hand. All right, good. You'll understand this. So this is called the banter IQ test. All right. You're now part of my banter squad. All the people over 30 are now thinking, what the hell is he on about? In order to reduce time when conducting business with people, there are, um, there are five things that you need to work out before you either deliver the proposal, deliver the tender, or deliver the quote, or you have the meeting. These things are budget. Is it important to work out what budget somebody's got to buy? Yes or no? Why is it important? You could, you could potentially price yourself out. You could be wasting time. And more importantly, you could be wasting their time. Now often the way that we ask people about budget leads people to think that if they tell you how much they've got to spend, that will be your price. Does that make sense? Who's done that in the past? Stop it. So you should have a number of programs that people can purchase from you. Make it nice, quick, easy and simple. What's really important is in order to save you time, what I find is useful, if you can work out what budget you're working to, it doesn't have to be an exact number, it could be a from to, therefore I can tailor something to your needs. So it doesn't have to be a precise number, but you do need to what it, what, work out what it is from to. So it might be between, between five and 10,000 pounds. You can now deliver something at five, seven and a half and 10, and they can choose which one's best for them. Does that make sense? Thanks, Chris. The next thing is authority. Often you're sending proposals, tenders, having meetings with, with, with people that can't make a decision. That's a waste of your time and then. How do you ask about authority and decision making? Does anybody know how to ask the question? Who other than you needs to be involved in this decision? Unleash the inner child. Because when I said that, some of you, a very small percentage of you, or maybe a high percentage, went, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. Who had that thought? Anybody? Couple? Be the inner child. Be my three-year-old when she hears the ice cream van. Can I have an ice cream? No. Why? Uh, it's too hot. What? It's too hot to go to the ice cream van. Why? Oh, it's just down the road. So should we go near then? I want an ice cream. I want an ice cream. Can I have an ice cream? Can I have an ice cream? Let's go get an ice cream for God's sake. Let's go fill the freezer full of them so you stop asking me questions. No, children don't have that, oh, I couldn't possibly do that moment. They don't think, then have a filter before they say something. Be interested in people's answers. Are we interested in who needs to be involved in this decision, yes or no? So why aren't we asking the question? In order to save you time, who else do you need to involve in this decision? We can make more part of this meeting and this process. I wouldn't want to leave them out. Because if you're having singular meetings, let's say there's two people involved in this decision and they've been partners for 15 years and you're dealing with one partner. And the other partner speaks to the other partner and says, yeah, I've been speaking to this guy called John for the last month. He's a really great guy. We've had a number of conversations. In fact, he sent me a book which I read and it was really good. What do you think the other partner's thinking? What, 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 what about me? Aren't I important? So get rid of the filter and ask the very simple questions. Who else needs to be involved in this decision? The next thing is to work out and identify their need. Often we're trying to sell products and services to people that they don't even need because you've not taken the time to ask. So it's time to get specific with people. What is it specifically you're looking for? And more importantly, why? People buy things for the why, not the what. Okay, so let's go back to the... Um, Kevin, what did he call an accountant? A money magician. Let's go back to the money magician. Why do people use a money magician? I'm never going to call an accountant an accountant ever again. Why do we use a money magician? It's a simple question, guys. Come on. Because they know what they're doing. But why do we? Why do we use an accountant? From a business perspective, why do we use an accountant? You don't want to go to prison. Okay, yeah, that's definitely one element. Because they're the experts. Okay. Because you want to pay less, because you want to pay less tax. Let's not beat you around the bush. No VAT men in here, is there? No tax men? Okay, good. Yeah, we use an account because we want to pay less tax. Why do we want to pay less tax? Okay, so we want more money. Okay, so why do we want more money? Nonsense. 
Do you hear what he said? To invest in our company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why do we want more money? More freedom. So that's your answer. That's your why. Why do we want more money? A nice holiday. That's your answer. So if I was to, if you were in my sales process, I'm not going to talk to you about anything other than your holiday. People buy on the why, not the what. How often are you selling what's when you should be selling why's? Stop focusing on what they think their need is and work out what their want is. The next thing is time frame. I went to look at a wedding venue. I'm renewing my uh, vows with my beautiful wife. It's our 10 year anniversary next, uh, <laughs> it's not next year, it's the year after. If only Becca was here, she'd have reminded me. <laughs> That's the beautician, but anyway, so on. I'm not with her anymore. Um, <laughs> So what I did is I went to see a wedding venue with my wife, my beautiful wife, and we sat down and we went through everything, da, 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 and we were there for about two hours. And she said, so do you want to book? And we just said, well, we're just looking right now. And she said, not a problem, when are you looking at booking? And we said, August 2020. She turned around and looked at us like we were insane. Well, it's, we're renewing our vows, we want to make sure it's a perfect place. So we're going to look at places for, for probably a year. She looked at me like I'd spat in her face, like I'd completely wasted her time because she couldn't even take bookings that far in advance. Now, if she'd have answered the phone to me and said, oh, great, what is it that you're looking at doing? What date do you have in mind? Do you think she could have just saved four hours of her life? And saved four hours of mine by going, look, here's a brochure. We can only take bookings 12 months in advance, as most places do. You'll probably find that if you start going around places now, they'll only do things 12 months in advance because of how prices fluctuate and how the economy works. So how's about I send you a brochure? If it's something that you're seriously considering thinking about, maybe come and see us just before that 12-month mark so we can make sure that we get it booked in. Now, what I will do for you, I will put your name in our diary for 2020. I'll have to find one. But I will put your name in our diary for 2020 just in case you decide to use us. <coughs> I'd have put the phone down and gone, she's great. Love, we can't go and, that's what we say in Sheffield, by the way. Love, we can't go and look at wedding venues for the next six months, unfortunately. Because they only booked 12 months in advance. We just saved loads of time, let's go to the park instead. When I say park, I meant pub. Okay, so work out time frames with people. How do you work out a time frame with somebody? It's really simple. Ask them. When is it you're thinking about introducing this? When is it that you're thinking about using an IT genius? When is it that you're looking at changing the money magician? And the next thing is repeat back. Get their agreement. Everything that you've just worked out, those four things, is that right? Have you got it right? Often when people say things, we hear different stuff. So many times that people will tell me things and I'll repeat it back and say, what, you, what were you listening to, John? And those weren't my words. Because we write in our language. That makes sense? So repeat it back and get to know, have I got it right? At that point in time, I can intent someone. What do you think I mean by intent? I can tell them what I'd like this meeting to go like. I can tell them how I'd want this process to go through. So what I'm hearing is you want X, Y, and Z. What I'd like to do is go through X, Y, and Z, and if you're happy, we can move forward. How does that sound? What do you think prospects say? That sounds great. Why do you think they say it sounds great? Because it's their words. It's what they want. Don't go to the beginning of a meeting, puke all over someone and say, this is my sales process and this is the way that we do business. We expect you to follow our lead. You follow their lead. They're the prospect. Does that make sense to everybody? And the final thing is to qualify. To qualify means, is that okay? Because not everybody will want to do business that way, and that's okay. The important thing is to find out. The important thing is to find out. So qualify by asking, is that okay? Mm -hmm.